Hello, happy to share with you today a little bit of our work here in the state of Ohio looking at manure applications, um, in particular looking at in-crop manure applications and nutrient uh, and water quality outcomes from those applications. Um, kind of an extension of Glenn Arnold's work, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with here in the state of Ohio. And uh, what our goal was here was to take a look at the in-crop manure application compared to a fall application where we then will go in during corn side dressing time and add additional nitrogen in the form of UAN or anhydrous ammonia um, because of the losses that we see. Um, we do a pretty decent job of thinking about trying to evaluate uh, the amount of nitrogen that we may have left over from a manure application, but uh, certainly the ideal of doing in-crop application is appealing because we don't have that loss potential from the manure sitting there without a crop growing in the field. Um, the layout that we have for this particular experiment uh, you see down there on the poster, and it is one uh, of the layouts that uh, USDA ARS, uh, our soil drainage unit here in the state, who does a lot of this edge of field work for us, um, that they use. And this paired field design allows us to uh, put a treatment on one field versus the other field, second field, um, and allows us to pull out those water quality differences. And uh, we, we are monitoring uh, this site from both a surface uh, water and tile water loss uh, uh, situation. In other words, we're able to quantify both of those sources of loss from water leaving the field site. And uh, with that, we're also monitoring 365 days a year. Um, they have small heaters within those uh, sample units that you see, keeps them uh, keeps them uh, warm during the winter, at least warm enough that they don't freeze up and we can get uh, continuous data. Um, my main interest is I'm a, an agronomist, so I uh, look at this uh, first uh, maybe from a um, corn yield or agronomic characteristic standpoint. And, um, you know, even though 2020 was a dry year for us, uh, started off promising, but then got dry in July and August. Um, where we ended up with probably 30 to 45 bushel less than what we would typically expect uh, from our um, average yields within the county here. Um, but our um, results uh, from the paired field site was our in-crop application did out yield our fall manure by about 17 bushel. Um, that looks very similar to work that Glenn Arnold has done both on farm and at our research station, which is actually fairly close to this field site. So the ideal that we're seeing that increase, I think it's a, a true difference from the in-crop manure application compared to uh, where we have uh, UAN applied at side dress. Uh, we did take soil samples that look at uh, the nitrate level as well as uh, phosphorus, even though we were taking a little deeper sample because our primary goal was the nitrate uh, using a zero to 12 inch core. Um, but we did see immediately after application that uh, the in-crop uh, manure did have higher nitrate and phosphorus levels. And that difference remained until we got to that next growing season, uh, May of the, the year after application. Um, it would have been good for us to have followed the soil samples uh, after the fall application, but uh, in hindsight, uh, we didn't get that data collected. Um, from a plant health perspective, farmers see that plant health benefit and often with manure application, and we can kind of document that here with the normalized differential red edge uh, data looking at the imagery. Um, you can see a, a clear difference. The uh, number of numeric values don't look as different as you might expect. Uh, we also did some uh, ear leaf at R1, and uh, both the nitrogen and phosphorus were lower for the end crop, which uh, uh, kind of um, is perplexing because of you know, the reality that we did see higher soil availability of nutrients, both of those nutrients. And um, so, um, you know, sometimes uh, tissue tests uh, with our uh, dry weather conditions can be uh, somewhat confusing. Uh, from an economic standpoint, uh, we did see where the um, in-crop application does make a whole lot of economic sense, uh, nearly $100 per acre increase uh, based off the partial budget that we used here. Um, even though we did have some higher costs for the drag line and trucking to that uh, using a frac tank uh, to supply uh, the 
um, manure for that particular field in the application. Um, from a water quality perspective, um, we do see that DRP and total P um, losses uh, tended to be a little bit higher, maybe from the soil disturbance that occurred with the uh, knifed in application of the manure versus uh, the less disturbing um, situation that we have with UAN application. Um, so there were some higher losses there from particularly from a percentage basis looks like a lot. When we look at the actual values, uh, maybe you could argue that they're not uh, that great, uh, particularly the DRP, which is certainly our concern when we think about um, think about uh, Lake Erie and, and the issues that we have there. Um, the good news is that from a nitrogen perspective, uh, the losses were less, uh, almost 10 pounds per acre less with uh, the in-crop versus uh, the uh, fall application. Uh, so some promise there as we think about utilizing this practice here in the state. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, Greg Labarge, uh, labarge.1 at osu.edu. Thank you.